Is the precious metals bull market dead? People have been asking this question, why is gold and silver underperforming compared to everything else? Gold today is at 1809 and silver just dipped below $25 at 24.95. And the sentiment for the precious metals is very low. People on Twitter can't understand what's going on. A lot of people have quit. They have moved to tech stocks or whatever. And the sentiment is just down. All it takes for you to see is just goes to some of the major gold stocks or let's say the medium tire stocks on Yahoo, for example, go to the conversation tab and just see what people are writing. A lot of people got in 50% higher than the prices that are now. Some stocks are down even more. And... When people lose this much money, a lot of them um, just get out. And since we know that the markets today are driven by sentiment, a lot of people are scared and they may think that the gold bull market is dead. So is it? I think that this is a time for the famous Buffett quote, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. You know, me, I'm the same. I'm a human, you know, I get emotional and uh, my portfolio have declined a lot uh, since last uh, September. Uh, and it's been gradual. I mean, it's been, it's been a gradual decline with some, some sometimes uh, the, the price went up and, you know, there were some corrections, but until now we have been gradually going down. So also I, I've been increasing my position actually this week. Uh, I have been buying a lot of gold stocks and emotionally your body tells you don't do it don't buy it. Uh, I mean you think maybe this I mean maybe I'm wrong you think to yourself maybe you are wrong maybe this is going to go down for another 6 months maybe another year maybe I'm completely wrong on my timing but then I remember the uh, famous Buffett quote and I saw that everyone around me are even the bulls are starting to be skeptical. And then I just told to myself, take a step backwards, look at the situation. How can you, are you wrong? And I can't imagine a scenario more bullish for precious metals. I just can't imagine. Inflation, that, uh, you know, first of all, the, uh, the Fed has printed so much money. QE is in all-time high. They are buying 120 billion worth of QE every month. The government wanna spend the government wants to spend a lot of money on stimulus, you know, on, on, on infrastructure bills for six trillion dollars. At the same time, we are starting to see inflation out of control. When I say inflation this time, I mean price inflation. So last month we got in, for June, expectation were 4.9, which was already high, and we got 5.4% inflation. And if you look for inflation since the start of the year, it's gradually going up. So every month, inflation is getting higher. And I expect it to get even, even higher. We have shipping delays. We have cheap shortages. All the commodities are reaping higher. A lot of the commodities are in all-time highs and doesn't even seem to stop. And if you look on a chart, of the ratio between gold and commodities, then you will see that gold has been getting so much cheaper compared to commodities. And if we look on the chart, on the long-term chart, it's supposed to rebound from here. So gold is supposed to now get uh, more expensive compared to commodities. The chart is supposed to go up from technical perspective. So everything that I see means this is the perfect scenario for gold and silver. Because we know that silver follow gold. And some people think, well, we had silver squeeze and we managed to get silver to $30 an ounce and then the next day we crashed. We tried silver squeeze too and a few weeks later, price reached $30 again briefly and crashed. And we have been trading sideways at 26 and this week have been brutal. The price of silver has been going down and we 
even reached below $25. So a lot of people are freaking out, but look at the gold to silver ratio. And if we are in a gold bull market, that ratio is supposed to go much lower. So to me, this is another bullish sentiment that the price will go higher. Now, at the same time, we have to know that the market don't work on the timeline that is convenient for us. And there is the saying that says the market can be irrational longer than you can remain solvent. It is possible that we're still wrong on the timing and it's still possible that things are going to go lower. Who knows? Maybe another 10 percent lower, maybe another 20 percent lower. Uh, I can't imagine it going even lower than that, but who knows? I mean, you can be wrong on timing. But again, take a step backwards and ask yourself, is mining stocks cheap or expensive? And the truth is that mining stocks are extremely cheap. A lot of mining stocks right now, gold mining stocks, are cheaper than they have been in uh, the start of 2020. And the gold price right now is much higher. I mean, even if gold dropped from, let's say, 1800 it's, it's now at $1,800. Let's say it dropped to uh, $1,550. But at that point, the miners would be um, priced correctly to what have they been priced in early 2020. And the situation right now is much worse. So we got a better situation for precious metals. We got inflation out of control. We got spending out of control. We got miners that are cheap. At the same time, the same, the same manner that I say that are cheap compared to 2020, they're making a lot of cash flow. They're making a lot of money. And some of them are trading. I mean, I have, for example, let me give you one company. This is not an investment advice. It's just a company that I invest in. Jaguar Mining. Jaguar Mining uh, right now is trading around five Canadian dollars. And the PE of the company is 4.5. It's true they have had a bad first quarter. They are in Brazil and they have had, um, you know, Cervasis lockdowns. Um, but the Q2 was much better. And the company is just making so much money, closing so much debt and even spending some money on, on uh, uh, exploring for new deposit on their land. They didn't discover the entire land. At the same time, they're making enormous cash flow. They're trading at 4.5 PE. How much is the stock market trading? A lot of companies, think about companies like Amazon with PE over 100, Apple with PE over 30. I mean, it's insane. Tech companies are trading today with PEs of three, di three digits. <laughs> and we have gold companies. I mean, how long can they go? PE of two? I mean, it's, it's insane. So... In my eyes, the sector is cheap. I don't know if it's gonna reverse tomorrow because I've already thought that in the last time that gold uh, uh, gold was actually lower a few weeks back, I thought that was the, the, the bottom, but I see that miners are leading the metals a little bit lower. So I don't know, maybe we can even go to below $700 briefly, maybe. But to me, it looks like a bottom. From a macro perspective, I don't think I'm wrong. From um, from a simple you know, check of is something cheap or expensive, I'm sure gold stocks are cheap. Not only in today's gold price, not only that they're cheap compared to today's gold price, they're cheap uh, compared to the macro situation. Now, I think another thing that is making uh, precious metals go lower is the belief among investors and maybe not in people that you know, like that watch this channel, maybe you know because I've talked about it, that the Fed is gonna raise the interest rate and rising interest rates are bad for gold. That's not true. First of all, you can just look on the period of the 70s to the 80s. Interest rates were high, even when interest rate were even when the interest rates were double digits, gold was still rising. Because what matter for gold is not the interest rates. It's the real interest rates. The real interest rates is the uh, what is the actual interest rate. Uh, subtract how much inflation you got. So if you, for example, if you have two percent interest rate and you have four percent inflation, 
your real interest rate is negative too. So I don't understand what are people afraid of? How much do you think the Fed is going to rise uh, uh, interest rate? Is it going to, are, are they going to rise it to 1%, to 2%, to 5%? To how much is going to rise? If right now we are having 5.4% inflation, and if inflation just keeps in the, you know, what inflation did in the first six months, if it does the same in the next six months, we are going to end the year with 7.7% inflation. And if inflation keep going in the same pace that it's been going till now, we may even end the year with double digit inflation, 10%. Do you know what would happen to the market if interest rate went to just 2%, let alone 10%? to fight like a double digit inflation, I mean, the market would crash. Now, I want to talk about deflation. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, we're going to get deflation. First of all, the first thing I would like to ask these people is deflation in what? Do you expect the value of the dollars to get stronger? So the, you know, the, your grocery bill is going to go down. Uh, the price for new or used cars is going to go down. Or when you say deflation, you mean financial assets are going to go down. Because I agree that there is great deflationary forces in our economy. But I believe that these forces are mostly in the financial sector. Because a lot of these stocks are overvalued and their price is based on low interest rates. So... Why is that? Because a lot of these companies are not profitable, but since they can borrow money very cheaply, they can remain alive. Some other companies are slightly profitable, but they're only profitable because they can borrow money. So they can borrow a lot of money, let's say at 1%, and they can do their thing and get a 1.2% return. So they live on this delta of 0.2%. And when you do it on a large scale, it can be very profitable. Now, what happens if interest rate go for 1 to 1.5? Your entire business model is dead. So there is a lot of these kind of companies in the economy. And since they are valued at some at certain numbers, other companies that maybe are profitable are valued higher than them. Because obviously, if there is a company that can take 1% uh, 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 debt and turn it into 5, it will be more expensive than the company that I just described that have a delta of 2. So... The entire stock market is inflated in terms of how much it's worth. Obviously, bonds are also in a bubble since interest rates are at zero. This is the lowest they have been in the, la in the last 200 years. And you can say that we have been going down for the last 40 years. We've just been in a downtrend. We are at zero. How, long, how much lower can they go? Can they get negative? Negative how much? Negative half? I don't, I don't believe we can go to negative five. So the effect of of uh, of interest going lower, I think, is dead. The, the, it's not gonna continue even lower than that. So the bond market is also in in a bubble. So yeah, there is deflationary forces that want to contract all of that, but the Fed is keeping interest rate at zero. Now let's say that for some reason, the, um, uh, if the Fed uh, hiked the interest rate, all of this bubble would pop. All of these companies would not be able to borrow money, so they would go bankrupt and the entire value of the stock market will go down. At the same time, the government would go bankrupt because most of the government debt is short term. Short term government debt that has to be refinanced this year and the next year would be more than half of the government debt. So the government can't afford to finance it at a higher interest rate. Right now they are financing it basically on zero because most of it is financed with two-year, um, you know, two-year treasuries, five-year treasuries. So they can't afford to pay more than that. And, and, and those treasuries are trading almost at zero, almost at zero percent. So the, the, the Fed is basically stuck between a rock and a hard place. They can threaten to raise interest rate. They can tell us they have all these tools. Which tools? When Powell said, oh, we have all these tools to fight inflation, but we don't use them yet. First of all, why don't you use them? Don't you rather fight inflation when it's still small? It's like you're a fireman and there is a fire starting and they tell you, oh, look, the, like half the forest got burned down. Or let's say, no, let's say five trees got burned down and the fire is out of control. 
Can you go and stop it? No, 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 no. It's a small fire. I don't have to go to stop it. So what, are you going to wait until the entire forest is burned down? And then what? When, when they go, what is the only tool the Fed has? The only tool they have is printing money. So what are the Fed going to do when they see this uh, burning forest? Throw in it gasoline? And uh, if half is burned, now the entire half plus the city next door is going to burn down? They don't have a way to fight inflation. Not without, I mean, if they're going to contract their balance sheet, if they're going to start throwing treasuries on the market, the treasury, I mean, the bond market is going to get destroyed. And we know that not only that China has been reducing their US dollar bond exposure, also Japan started to reduce their exposure. So they've been lowering down how many bonds they got, how much money they loan to the US government. Europe has been increasing a little bit because they have negative yields and the euro is not better than the dollar. It's probably the same or maybe worse. So uh, situation not good. The only thing that the Fed can do and you know other central bank is keep printing and trying to keep this bubble for as long as possible. And that is extremely bullish for us holding you know precious metals. Now, the last thing is that no one is buying precious metals on margin. So people don't take loans to buy it. We are not affected by this debt bubble. We have, I mean, low interest that didn't cause people to take loans and go and buy silver. Doesn't happen. I mean, if maybe some people do it, but most people don't do that. So we are not in a not in a bubble in the sense that we that the price of the precious metals is based on interest rate. It's not like the housing market which have mortgages in it. It's not like stocks which have a lot of companies has debt and uh, you know uh, yeah. So we don't have that. And the last, the last thing is like, let's say that we have this kind of a deflation in financial assets and the government go bankrupt. What happened to a country with a, <laughs> what happened to the currency of a country with, uh, that is bankrupt? It's going to be strong. I doubt it. I don't believe you deflationist. Please show me a country that is bankrupt with a strong currency. It doesn't exist. So this is the perfect storm. And you should keep a cool mind if uh, you are invested in precious metals. What I would and 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 it bothers you. I mean, don't get caught in this day-to-day -day news. People have such a short time horizon, and the entire picture looks great. Is this the absolute bottom? I have no idea. To me, it looks cheap. I'm a buyer at this point. I've increased uh, uh, my holdings in in a few companies, and and I'm uh, very bullish. Also on commodities. So I just decided to make this video because I think people need some uh, reassurance and need to have a different perspective on things and not to just, you know, the, the news are just bombarding us every day and everyone just look at this, you know, price swings day to day, even month to month. It's really irrelevant. If you are just early to the party, I'm early to the party and we are right and some people say, oh, you are just perish on the market. You are calling for a crash and you are just, a, you know, you're a clock that is right twice a day. And I call bullshit for that because it's not that I'm bearish on the market. I'm not just saying, oh, there is going to be a crash coming. I'm explaining what are the problems? Why can't the Fed fight it? Um, you know, what is the problem in the economy? What, why things can continue like that forever? So there is a reasoning for that. And, you know, let me give you an analogy. Let's say there is two guys and one is just eating and eating and eating. And the other guy is telling like, man, you have to stop. You're getting really fat. You will get a heart attack. The guy doesn't care. Keep eating. So you tell him like, man, I think you're like 180 kilo. You have to stop. I mean, it's really not healthy. You really get a heart attack. The guy doesn't stop eating. You keep telling him and he doesn't stop eating. He gets enormously fat and he gets a heart attack and he dies. And then a bunch of people come to you and tell you, you're a broken clock. If you just keep continue to tell that the guy is going to get a heart attack, then he's going to get a heart attack. Well, no, I saw what is he doing. I saw what it's going to cause. I made a simple analysis. I saw this can't end well unless he changed his behavior and he didn't. So no, you're not a broken clock. You see what's going on and you prepare and that makes you smart. Doesn't make you a broken clock. And uh, just being wrong on timing doesn't mean you're wrong on the picture. And usually I think if you are an investor, if you are a successful investor, you are 
probably going to be most of the time early to the party. I mean, look, for example, at Michael Berry in 2008. He was extremely early to the, um, he started shorting the housing market in 2006. So he was two years early. And even when, you know, subprime started to explode, uh, the prices of these mortgages kept rising up. So you should see the movie, The Big Short. There was a period where the houses were supposed to go down, but they kept going up in, uh, the mortgages kept going up in price. And, uh, you know, they had to put more collateral to uh, uh, not get out of their shorts. And all the investors in the fund were to get out. And he, everyone, you know, told him he's wrong. And he ended up being right, but he was extremely early. And that costed him because being early was really hard. And his investment was going down while everyone else was having a party. But in the end, he made tremendous amount of money. Tremendous. Peter Schiff as well. He was also shorting the, the uh, subprime bubble in 2008. So you have to be early to the party if you want to make money as an investor. If you're a great trader, great for you. I just don't do these kind of things. But I know there is people that know how to trade. They are making money. So, I mean, I'm not judging. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you know you want to support my channel and if you want other people to reach me, you to reach the videos. And uh, I will see you on the next video.